Okay, so this question here is asking us to solve for x for the equation uh, x to the fourth minus 256 equal to zero. Now, we can't find any greatest common factors. It's already set equal to zero, so we're able to start looking to see if there's any other alternative factoring methods that we could use. And I hope what we see right away is that we have a difference of squares here. Since x to the fourth is a square and 256 is a square and we have a difference in our negative sign here. So we're going to set this up. Our square root of x to the fourth is x squared and then x squared. Now we're going to do a negative and a positive since that's what we do with the difference of squares. And then a square root of negative two or square root of 256 is 16. This is still all equal to zero. Okay. Now we're going to take a look and see if we can factor these down any further because uh, we are not fully factored yet. x squared minus 16, oh, it looks like we have another difference of squares. Okay, so now we have square root of x is x, square root of x is x. We're going to do a minus and a positive. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 16 is 4. And then we still have x squared plus 16 over here. This is still all equal to 0. Now our question if we recall, is asking us to solve for x. We have not solved for x yet. So what we need to do is set all these equal to 0 and solve for x. So we have x minus 4 is equal to 0. Subtract 4, or sorry, add 4 to both sides. We get x is equal to 4 here. If we go here, we have x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now we're going to subtract 4 and subtract 4 giving us x is equal to a negative 4. And now this is where things get a little bit more interesting. We can set x squared plus 16 equal to 0. We could also use the quadratic formula here if we'd like to, but I'm going to show you a different way to do this. So we have x squared plus 16 is equal to 0. Let's subtract 16 from both sides. So we get our x squared by itself. Okay. Now we still want to get x by itself, and it's currently x squared. So we're going to take the square root of both sides, giving us x is equal to the square root of negative 16. Now, usually, we can't take the square root of negative numbers, but now that we look back and have accepted that we can have complex numbers with imaginary numbers in them, we can do this. We know that x is equal to negative, or the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 16. And that's, perf that's exactly the same as what we had written right here. Now, if we take the square root of negative 1, we know that that is i. And the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4, giving us x equal to plus or minus 4i. So now to report our final answer, we know that x is equal to 4 from here, negative 4, positive 4i, and negative 4i. And that is our final answer.